Hey guys, Nikita here. New tutorial breakdown today of this render here. Because, yeah, I thought if we check on Behance, type in perfume rendering, I'm here on the top of the page. And yeah, I thought maybe it uh, may interest you. And yeah, like a few renders here. And if we check here, perfume 3D on Behance, here right at the top from Aldia Gondam, amazing guy. He created like with the help of my tutorial. You can check those series out here those renders here and yeah they look absolutely amazing and yeah he also gave here credits to me so thank you for that but yeah it's awesome to see you guys recreating my work and yeah practice with my tutorials and then see like the results so let's start with this here you can follow along with every software because here it won't be a step-by-step -step tutorial because yeah that would be too much but I will give you like a detailed breakdown and you can follow with every 3D software. You just need to know the tools, but it's really basic. And at the end we will use Photoshop. So you will need Photoshop. So to add like a little adjustments, but like the 3D part is like really, yeah, not so complicated. So yeah, here we have our scene. And if I start uh, the render, so yeah, here we have our scene. Yeah, like the model of the bottle, if you don't have it already, you can download it. Like just check out the whole tutorial series again here where we model it and texture it and the material. So I don't cover that because yeah, we covered that already a lot of times. But yeah, so you just bring in the Dior bottle and again, like always, like the render settings from Octane. So path tracing, so the glass looks good, specular depth, like a lot of them so the glass looks good otherwise yeah it will be here you see it's just too dark and yeah diffuse depth we don't need so much scatter depth we don't need so much and also check definitely here adaptive sampling so everything is faster and yeah so here some i don't know like some resolution and we just bring in the model with all the materials i won't cover that here and then again, you just bring in an HDI environment. For the beginning, just bring in something. So, so you just lighten up the scene. It doesn't have to be final because later, when we will bring all of the assets together, then we can work with the HDI because then we see how the HDI lights and colors affecting like the scene. But yeah, like we use for that example, like anyone here. And yeah, and first of all, if we check our reference here, we have here like a ground. So the ground super basic. If we just, and again, I won't get like into super detail. It's just really basic stuff. And there are like already like a ton of tutorials of the stuff that I will show you. But if you have like any questions and if you don't understand something like exactly, then just write it in the comments. Then I will make a tutorial or something. Yeah, so the plane, it's yeah super easy. I just bring in the plane and B so we see the mesh. And yeah, I will just create a few more segments. And here, if you bring in a displacer under the plane, you can go into the shading of the displacer and just add a noise. So you see, you just get like a little bit of deformation. But uh, the noise should be definitely a little bit bigger and you see and now it's yeah it's it's getting something like that. And what I like to do is to stack those displacements. Yeah, okay, in that example it's not so crazy important because you won't see it, but yeah, you see it still like some it just brings a little bit more of organic feel. Because if you just take a straight plane, it just like no ground, especially in the nature, is just straight. So what I do, I just like, uh, for example, to bring some very, very rough displacements in. So really something big like that. And maybe going to the displacer object and make the high even a little bit higher. So something like that. And now on top on that, add another displacer. And again, this displacer shader noise. And if we scale that noise, you see we have, we have like this deformation from before, but we bring just a little bit more of a detail. But this one we can really make a little bit smaller maybe. And also if we go here to the object, just make it a tiny bit, maybe just, yeah, one or two percent, uh, centimeters. Yeah, something like that, maybe three. But again, guys, like we won't see the difference in that example. And yeah, and then if you really want, just add a little bit 
even more displacers and to add more detail but then you also need um, to make more segments so yeah but in our example it will look something like that so yeah just uh, look here but if we check like this ground i have here like a large displacement then a small one like with different um, noise patterns so uh, just try out different noise patterns and also one super small you see so this one the super small is like really just 10 percent um scale and it brings like really like those small yeah ground texture so that's a nice trick and then i just bring a really really basic uh, material in so it looks complicated but it isn't and also you see we have like here that um, yeah those seams here but that's not important because if we then later go to the uh, camera and start our render we see we anyways won't see that so that wasn't so important for me so if we check like here our texture again just check out like on mega scan so bridge or on polygon or something or so you just need the diffuse one uh, definitely like here the roughness one absolutely the normal because the normal brings in all of the detail and even if you have like the displacement and yeah just play a little bit around here i just mix two textures in the uh, normal i just like to mix two normal textures so we just bring even like for example if we go here like some pieces go up and down but you still see like even more detail even if that's maybe not in the original map so i like to play with that a little bit and yeah and obviously here just um try out different um sizes what fits and also here some textures so i don't know i think it was uh like this kind of color but i just bring in a color correction note and just adjusted it but yeah it's i'm showing it to you right now here because it's already everything adjusted but don't don't focus too much again on the beginning on those details build the scene around it so uh, obviously you don't bring in the texture from the beginning so you just bring in like the playing ground you have your perfume model and then you bring like all of the other assets and objects together and then later you can always adjust and bring everything together because you can't know how it really will look at the end from the beginning on so yeah we can close that and okay so the next part is we can already start like to bring in the camera so again here just uh, go on objects octane camera go into the camera and try to position however you want it okay i have like here the square ratio right now but important if you go to the camera uh, to this here make the focal length like a lot like i don't know 120 or something so it just looks a little bit more flat and not so distorted so yeah i like that kind of look and yeah so i just go to the camera that i set up so yeah just the main product in the middle because now it's important now you could play like with the plane like how high it, sh it should be like with the texture like does the texture look good in that perspective and now what we will add is the rock so I've, if i just activate that like this part here yes like don't worry it looks shit right now because like all of our light is uh, turned off because we will go through all the light as well and here you see I just wanted to bring in the rocks just to emphasize the product a little bit so and also to frame it a little bit because you see it's like if we go here from the top view it's like surroundings like those rocks are surrounding the product and I think that's really cool because yeah our view is just more guided towards the middle and nothing is here like in the front like don't put if we um yeah for example yeah if we would you could even put something like here in the front to frame it even more but don't bring i don't know like the rock like too many rocks here on the front or something and that will block like the bottle but again you just really play around and and and, and see what works and what doesn't like you just really have to have fun with it and understand a little bit like of composition and what works and what doesn't 
So you see here, like if we check our reference, I have some cracks inside. Yes, those cracks are definitely not like super hardcore professional, but I just wanted to bring a little bit because yeah, it's, it's not the focus of the whole render. So I didn't spend too much time on that, but I just wanted to bring, yeah, something interesting again. That was a personal project. So I just played a little bit around. I watched the tutorial about like Voronoi. And yeah, I just wanted to implement it. So that's super important also. You have to watch tutorials and then recreate exactly what you do. That's what I advise you. And then what you learned in that tutorial, use that in your own projects. So I don't know if you watch like, I don't know, some product rendering tutorials like lighting or something, make afterwards like some of your own projects and use the exact same technique. So you're, it's really burning into your brain. So, but uh, what we can do here. So I will just take this rock here. And again, guys, I'm, I don't think that I have to, to tell you where you can get rocks. Just type in on CG Trader rock pack. There are like amazing rock packs for free. You can have like, I don't know, 12 rocks or buy them even better on mega scans. They are, they come with perfect textures and they look awesome. But yeah, so here we have our rock. And again, extremely easy, extremely, f I will fast go, uh, I will go fast over it. You just bring in with shift a Voronoi fracture, uh, I mean with alt. And here you see it's, yeah, breaking like into this, yeah, kind of fragments. And if you go to the Voronoi fracture, you can go to sources. And here you see the distribution. Again, there are already one billion tutorials on that, but you can just, yeah, make a little bit more of them. So you see it's breaking here and now we can just offset the fragments a little bit just to bring like this kind of tiny cracks. And what I also liked, because you see they are too straight, like <laughs> they are literally definitely too straight. I like to bring a little bit like of, yeah, I don't know, just a little bit more variation to break those lines up and that's I'm doing by geom the geometry glue and enable that and glue type to cluster. And then if we make a few more clusters, you see it's, it's just here. It's just breaking up those pieces a little bit more. So yeah, something like that. And you see they are, yeah, a little bit more break, but you, we still have those straight edges here. And there's even one more trick. But, um, yeah, that you can go to detailing and enable detailing. And now you see if we uh, disable it. Okay, we don't see it in that example because we have a lot of polygons. But, like, the topology, okay, it looks <laughs> like that. But if we bring detailing, you see we just get a little bit more only on the edges. So, yeah, you can then enable also noise surface. Then you see it's just breaking up all of those parts a little bit more. So this is without the detailing. You see it's like very straight on, on like those pieces. But with detailing, it loads a little bit because we get more topology. You see, bam, it looks already much better, but yeah, you can adjust it. But there are like a lot of tutorials on that already. So yeah, I just bring in like here, like four of those main rocks, those big ones into the scene. And yeah, just with like a little bit of detailing. And now if we check here our, our main image, we have like on the ground a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of small rocks. So it's just like gravel, right? Like gravel, like different sizes. Because this, because this one here, it looks, yeah, too generic and we don't have detail. And that's what I see a lot what beginners are doing is they make like landscapes or like natural environments, grounds and all that stuff. And they just take a texture and maybe put some plants on it or something. But the texture you see, it's just the texture with maybe a normal matte displacement, but still you always need a little bit of variation on like the surface because even we have an awesome texture and we have like here some height, it just looks too straight like rock. So that's why what we are, will do, we will place like a lot of different rocks on that to just break that even more up. So in that example, um, yeah, I will just show it to you here, for example. So just bring any rock 
maybe one with not so much uh, polygons because we won't see it anyways and just makes everything slower. And this rock we will place if we go to objects, uh, octane scatter, we bring this rock into our octane scatter. And this octane scatter, if we go here, we can go to type and surface. And here in the surface, we just plug in our main ground plane. And you see, yeah, I just reloaded it because the textures uh, won't, uh, were not loading. And you see like here all the green points here and everywhere this green points is, is a rock. But now you see like all of the rocks are the same size. And yeah, if we scale it, like all of them get smaller. And if we scale them bigger, everything gets big, bigger. So we need variation in there. So we just go here to MoGraph and Effector, just a random effector. And we go to Octane Scatter. And this random effector we just put here into the um, effector. So you see they are starting to levitate. <laughs> that looks cool. But it's because if we go to our random effector here in the parameter, the position is different. So, but we need the scale. We can make uniform and absolute scale and just make it a little bit smaller. So now uh, some are very small, some are a little bit bigger. We can make it even higher. And also the rotation. Just give some rotation values. Yeah, they are starting to rotate and all that stuff. But yeah, maybe this value. Yeah, exactly. You see. And also we can make maybe th this whole rock so you remember just this small one here, just a little bit smaller. And yeah, now we have like one variation. And now we have like, yeah, maybe we can go to the scatter and just bring in like 3000 or something. Yeah, or even 5000. So just to fill up the space, you see? And now you can just add another rock with like some other shape, maybe just more round or something and make even smaller and make it more to fill those gaps here. So yeah, what I did, I just delete that. And if we check here our small rocks, yeah, that doesn't even look so perfect. You see here, I have like a lot of different rocks and yeah, we could even fill more those gaps there. And as well, I have here on the ground, uh, in the front, I mean. So you see when you have like all of the gravel and guys, you can definitely do it better. <laughs> But still, it looks good because of the depth of field. But yeah, we will come to it in a second. But you see, I just wanted to cover a little bit here the edge. Because if you would zoom in, you would see that, yeah, you would see that uh, just the glass is too straight on the plane. And just to cheat a little bit, I just bring in just a few rocks here just to cover some places. It doesn't have to be like completely covered because you see here at the front, you can still see the edge, but yeah, that works absolutely fine. And again, for those rocks here, absolutely normal texture. So again, yeah, you can use any rock texture or any ground texture. And again, you, yeah, you don't need even displacement because you won't really see it. So normal is okay. And here, most important, diffuse. And it doesn't need to be, it's just 1K because it's so small, you don't see it. And we want to save up like our um, memory. So that's really basically it for the scene. And of course, guys, again, just, just take some references and just bring everything together and adjust it accordingly. And uh, then also, um, yeah, because I knew already that I wanted to add this background, I just the image, I don't want it to do it like in 3D because it's anyway out of focus and yeah, we will do it in Photoshop. But I knew that the background will be uh, transparent. So I already activated here in the, in the settings, just the alpha channel. Um, so yeah. And then I saw that like here on the middle, on the bottom middle part, we have like a lot of things happening. But here on the background, it's just plain. Yes, we will have our background, but our background will be out of focus. So it won't catch like any attention. It will just support the foreground. But I still wanted to bring yeah, some, some elements. But then here it's really, you can do everything, whatever you want. But I just took here like two toruses. So like this torus here and make it yeah very thin. And it was like really just 
playing again around and bring them here and see what works. And I just wanted to add like a little, little tiny fine detail and then absolutely normal gold um, texture. So material, so just metallic one and specular, just make the specular like a little bit yellow orangey. And that's basically it. And now we can start with, um, yeah, I will show you in a second how we can create the texture here of the rocks with this gold. But now we can start to create the lighting. So I have here, but we won't use anything. So first of all, you need the HDRI environment and you really need to find something because if we take the same HDRI environment and we just turn it, yeah, like rotate it to a wrong degree, you see, we have like two crazy full blown out reflections. So that was again, a lot of trying out. And also I didn't want it to take a HDI um, environment with a lot of detail because all this glass would uh, reflect it. And I didn't want it. I wanted to have like a clean glass. So it was like really like here, something like that would work. So then we have something like that. And, and also just to brighten up a little bit the scene because you don't, I don't really need um, with uh, to light the bottle with the HDI environment because we will do it as always manually because we have so much more control and we can emphasize like different parts but I think that was okay so then the first part we definitely have to yeah to light the liquid so for that example uh, we have this light here so the camera is here on the front and we need the light behind the the bottle and also with the gradient. But again, watch this tutorials after this video to really see how that works and how to create the materials and how everything yeah, works out. But yeah, it looks then something like that. And we have instantly a beautiful, yeah, liquid. And also not just the liquid, like you see, because we have on our rock a nice like texture and all that stuff. And because it's like very, like kind of 90 degrees to the rock, like all of these different curves and bumps and all that stuff will get like a strong contrast of like light and dark. And that's cool. And again, if you wouldn't like it, you could just, um, yeah, exclude this rock from the slide. But again, in those tutorials, which I linked, I explained that everything, but that's fine. So now we go to the second light and that second light is if we check like our rock here. Yeah, the material is a bit complex, but yeah, I, I, I had here the rocks. Okay, <laughs> let's do the material because then it will make more sense. So if we check off those rocks here, the material, it looks a bit complex, but it isn't. So first of all, before we go into that, we start like by our smallest piece and our smallest piece is absolutely normal a rock texture because yeah if we if we check like here it still looks like a normal rock texture so with that we will begin and again just a noise texture on the bump and the roughness to bring like some details a normal map take the one from the rock itself the same with the displacement and yeah you can play a little bit around uh, with the color you either can bring in the texture map for the diffuse the, the color or just make it black But I went here for the black. So yeah, let me show you that material on the rock here So that would look like what we just did. So just the rock texture with you see like some bumps and Let me bring in so yeah here you see if we activate the light. It's just a black rock Exactly what we did with some bumps some details but it's already cool, but I wanted to bring this little gold inside. So it's like a dirty, huge golden nugget. Not perfect, but also not just rock. So yeah, then I've created a golden material because we will mix the rock and the golden material. Uh, yeah, I also have like transparent here, just completely ignore that. Bam, so you see, <laughs> oh, that would be cool. Like. Just a really huge golden nugget. But that's, yeah, it's, I know it's a little bit overblown and all that stuff, but it's because the lighting and it's too reflective. But if we go into our gold here, again, 
extremely easy. It's, it's just a metallic material with um, some roughness. And again, it's just, if we check out here, it's again just r some rough, some rock ground rock textures. So put that in the roughness. So we get like some pieces are a little bit more rough, some a little bit less. Then I have, if you see without it, yeah, just let me show you. So this would be just the material itself. So yeah, not realistic at all. Then we bring a little bit of roughness and bam, you see already we're just breaking up the whole texture. So if we make the solo note, you see we just bring in yeah more detail and just break up all of the texture. So some pieces are more reflective, some are less reflective and yeah, something like that. But now we could also just uh, bring in some uh, bit more texture because it's still a little bit too, too smooth. And for that, just bring in a noise texture. And if we bring that noise texture into our bump and re right click it, you see, like we just bring in again a little bit more of texture to, to break that everything down. And yeah, here you can just play around with uh, the size and all that stuff. And then also as a last thing, again, if we just check out the rock texture here, we take a normal map and maybe you could even go with, with go with a different one than the original one. And that normal map, we just bump into the normal. So perfect. You see now it's getting like the real rock texture and it looks like yeah, really a nice in the nature found like golden, golden, golden nugget. Yeah, I know it's not super realistic, but you get the point. And now it was just mixing those two, um, two materials together. If we check that here, we have like our new uh, mix material. And yeah, I have here a specular. You can ignore that. And perfect. So you have here on the top, the golden material. And here on the bottom, the rock material. And if you go to the octane mix material, you can play here with the amount. So if we go it to one, then it will be the top one. If we go to zero, it's just the rock. So yeah, we just give a little bit of shininess. But here you can do now something interesting with the amount. So the amount is kind of mask. So it's black and white. And you could bring, for example, yeah, an octane noise and tie and bring it into the amount and use some yeah, interesting noise, for example, Voronoi. And now you see nothing much is happening because we could just add here yeah, exactly more contrast. And now, yeah, you, you see exactly because if we check our Voronoi fracture, it has, if we bring in the contrast, like black and white spots. So it's breaking this up and you can now add just a, maybe a transform mode, uh, mode note. You see, this is like the typical, um, Voronoid uh, text, um, noise. And we have like a lot of contrast and yeah, you could really create some, yeah, crazy things with it or maybe, um, maybe create a noise where you have like this veins or I don't know what it's known. It's like this kind of slide. So you, don't have the gold everywhere, but just like in, in some like places. But yeah, anyway, I, I didn't want it to use that here, but that's really in interesting. So now our rock is like a dirty nugget. And then that's basically it. So we have like this example here and yeah, just place them everywhere around. But then I realized, so we had like our first light here that this right side wasn't like so much shining. I just wanted to bring a little bit more of light. So yeah, this is doing like this light here. It's, you see, it's also on the ground. So it's not lighting up the whole rock. I just wanted to bring it kind of a, yeah, some light behind the rock, but on the ground. So just to lighten up a little bit more the rock. Then if we, then if we activate like here, our two lights that we have set up, and check out the whole image. You see, like this contrast was too strong, and in general, like this part was too dark because I knew already I wanted to place it like some kind of a nature in daylight, so everything should be much much brighter because those parts can't be so dark in daylight. 
So I've created here on the left side to fill in those shadows here because from the HDRI environment, the light comes from right. So we have to fill in all of this area here. And that's what I'm doing with this big light here. And if you see, bam, everything is much more brighter and much more daylight. Yeah, and you see we also get like much more color and everything is just too much more brighten up. So always think, is it like in the morning, is this evening sun and everything would be much more yellowish orangey? Is this like after the sun sets or then everything would be a little bit more darker and all that stuff? Or is it like bright daylight? Then everything has to be much more brighter. Yeah, so think about that. Then I have a light. I figured out it was not so important, but I just wanted, uh, yeah, if we see it here, you see it's like literally just beneath the bottle and just to add like some edges because without the slide you see it's it's already looking good but I just wanted to bring some sharp edges because yeah if you watch my tutorials I just like highlights and sharp edges and to emphasize all that because that makes it everything pop it's like outlines of a graffiti piece or something it just emphasizes it but yeah anyway but that's already it. I have here some other light sources, but those weren't so important. And that's basically it. Try different light settings up. Maybe here I have like some light here on the top, but then it was yeah too bright and all that stuff. So I don't like that. And play a little bit more around with the, with the ground. Add very small, tiny gravel stones, add a lot of them. But I think that looks really cool. I like this gold. I like also, if you see here, that we will do in the post, um, that here this gold is like literally gold and yellowish, but it's also like we have a lot of green tones. I don't know why. But here on our render, everything is like one kind of color scheme. So everything is like this reddish, like whiskey kind of stuff, brownish and not so yellowish and punchy and that's really cool but I knew it already here but I know that the render is making just like 70 or 80 percent because I know like everything what has to do with color I'm not doing very often in the render because it's here in, in the 3D tweaking much more than if it's then easier in, in Photoshop. But yeah, it also uh, depends on, on, on various things. But here I could just fix it in Photoshop and just have even more fun there in Photoshop. So I will show you that in a second. So we can render that out. Oh, and of course the depth of field. Super important in this, that kind of shots. Because again, I knew that I want to place it in the background and have depth like space and area and some mountains in background. And if you would make a photo, it, it, it would look much be better with like a high aperture. So the, the foreground and the background is blurred out a little bit like here. So the eyes are completely drawn towards this Dior. Like there's happening so much around, but you don't even look at it because it's out of focus. You know what I mean? So for that, you just go into your camera, thinless and go here to depth of field and just crank up the aperture, so like a lot. And here on the focus point, just click on this picker and click here on, on the Dior and yeah, here maybe a top glass, exactly. And here you see already the foreground, uh, we need it only for the foreground because we have no background, but you will do it in Photoshop. You see, bam, it gets like this out of focus and I love that. So now we can render that out and I will use different passes again because it's more fun and we have more control. So if we check here on Photoshop, I use few passes like here the refraction and yeah, just to also just to break everything more up and make good selections and just to work even better. And yeah, guys, if you liked it and you're interested in to create this kind of professional, high quality 3D work, I just launched my Ultimate 3D program where I help 3D artists to grow their business by creating high quality 3D work and getting high paying clients. So check the first link in the description. I explain everything. Check that out. Let's have a chat and yeah, see if it fits you.
So back to cinema. And again, we just click here on and we just render that out. So yeah, save it somewhere. And the important part is here, Octane Render. Use the noise beauty pass and use all GPUs if you have. And go here to the render AUV group and uh, render AUV manager. And here you see already like a lot of different stuff. So again, I check out my other tutorials. Like I have huge tuto tutorials on like render passes. So I'm not going in into detail, but you can use different render passes for different stuff. Like for example, oh yeah, we have a little bit of post. We have, yeah, like objects ID. We have ambient occlusion. We have here just the reflection. So yeah, we can perfectly use it in Photoshop to add even more punch. And here reflection that as well. We can put it in screen blending mode and just paint where we want a little bit more of shininess and yeah, and all that stuff. So render that out as a PSD or EXR and let's check out Photoshop. So if we check Photoshop, this is here my finished uh, piece here. But if we check like the original render, that was the beauty pass. You see, it's too green. It's, it doesn't has this color scheme. Because like, look here, it has like this. I love this. It's this kind of warm, whiskey look. Uh, I don't know, like this. I like this red kind of color. So how do we go from here to there? Okay, let's do everything one by one. First of all, of course, I added a background image. And yeah, I've applied it already. But just if it's too sharp, filter here, blur and Gaussian, uh, Gaussian blur to make it a little bit blurry and adjust it like to the kind of the perspective. And yeah, and also what you see already, the background is <laughs> definitely too bright. Yes, it's like um, daylight and it, maybe it would be something dark like that. But if you see the rocks are still much darker than our background. So I just added like here some adjustments layer to make the background darker, to make this here on the foreground pop. Then what I did with the, with the whole image here, I just adjusted here, for example, I think curves. Yeah, just add a little bit more of the bright uh, parts and make the dark parts a little bit darker. So to add more contrast. Here also the same, just adjusted a little bit more. And here I just made everything a little bit brighter to pop that even more. So you see, we just bring in a little bit more of contrast, a little bit more of light. And then you see here, if we check like our bottle, we have here on the left sides and in general, the glass has too much, too much gray values, but I wanted to have it more like crisp, more glassy, more transparent. And yeah, you can make something, for example, yeah, first of all, you just go here to material ID pass and select, yeah, with color range only that, only that bottle. So you have a selection around here. And yeah, again, check my other tutorials. And then I just uh, copied that same bottle over. So I only have here this bottle. And on that bottle, I give a, uh, gave a curve adjustment layer. So you see, we just make those gray spots here just a little bit brighter and you see it just looks a little bit more like glassy, more transparent. So yeah, we just make, you see just this, those gray areas. So those here are the bright parts, even a little bit brighter. Don't make it too bright because then you get clamping. But yeah, something like that was working fine. So already that looks pretty cool. Then, yeah, just some little detail. I took here only the ring, the same here with uh, the color selection and brighten it up a little bit. And then I wanted to improve a little bit the rocks. So here I've just selected the rocks or you can even use crypto mats again, other tutorials. And then I bring in the rocks and played with them a little bit. So I've gave them here, if we check like the hue saturation. I've adjusted a little bit here the color. So you see it was a little bit too yellow. And then I was, was just seeing how can I get like this more of reddish brownish color and added here some more adjustments. And yeah, and then I went to the other passes. So for example, refraction, 
So if we make that 100 degrees, so that one, I like that to use and put it, yeah, so this is original. Just if you put it here, for example, in, in soft light, you see you get even more contrast in the glass, but of course this is obviously too much. But here just a few percent and you see you bring in a little bit more of contrast and everything pops a little bit. And again, you can here use, for example, reflection. I think I didn't use it, but you can put it here in color dodge blending mode. And yeah, just add a little bit opacity or even add a mask on, or, and just paint there what you need. So something like that, same with post-processing, just in screen blending mode. And then the cool part. So when everything is set up and I like that, I go to the top most layer and just press Control, Shift, Alt and E. That will bring here everything together. And this layer I will convert into a smart object. So that means if we now create an effect, I don't know, like filter, camera raw filter, what we will use, we can always come back to it so it's non-destructive. And so let's do that, camera raw filter. And here like all the magic starts really to, to come together because we have like a lot of stuff to fix. Yeah, for example, we can yeah see with the contrast, I always uh, like to add a little bit of texture. So that what makes those little pieces a little bit more crisp. And you see, like, I like this kind of gold. It's like, yeah. Also here clarity a little bit and just maybe of saturation. And what's all super important is like here the color mixer. For example, uh, if we go to saturation, I don't want any green here. I don't want any really blue here. And I want that the yellow pieces, so if we go to hue, we can target the yellows. And you see those are here on the yellows in the middle, but we can bring them here to the oranges. So if we do it extremely, you see like here this yellow part, it will just get orange or yellow to green. This yellow part will get green and also here in the background. So what that's meaning, we bring everything more to the orange. Yeah, I like that already a lot. So you see, yeah, you see here, it's, it has a little bit like of a green tint. But if we take those yellows, which are already a little bit of green, or even if you take those greens and put them even more to the yellow, yeah, you see everything gets more like this kind of a warmer look. And also we can go to the color grading, like color grading, huge topic, like a lot of, to say with it. But it's cool, like we start with highlights and shadows. So the shadows are mostly in nature, like a little bit of bluish. Because those shadows are not in the direct influence of the sun. So they are not brightened up and all that stuff. But if it's clear sky, if it's clear sky, so if it's blue, then those shadows will always get a little bit of this blue. You understand? O of the sky. So yeah, if we add here just with alt click, a tiny bit, a really tiny bit of blue. Yeah, that's making already cool. And also, like if you have like the complementary, like if you have blues, it always looks cool when you have a little bit of orange. So exactly what we have here. But now in the highlights, because the highlights are in the sun and you see like it's uh, autumn, like time of the year. I don't know if it's, that's the right word in English. It's like more brownish. The leaves are brown and yellow. So the highlights, the the places which are lit up by the light will attract also that kind of color. So in the highlights, I just add a little bit more of an orangey. So yeah, that looks already much better. Yeah, you have midtones and all that stuff. So yeah, we have something like that. And I don't know if you see it on YouTube, but we have, yeah, that looks already much more everything together, but still you have some more stuff to do. For example, the, the background, <laughs> you see everything looks like super crisp and everything extremely clear, but we need to add a bit more of grain because you see like even our foreground stays kind of the same, but the background, because we just applied blur, it's just too smooth. But if you also do like cameras, photography, you always have like a little bit of grain. So yeah, and air also it brings just everything much more together. We could even bring a little bit more. And also it's like this kind of, 
ja, how is it called? Uh, yeah, kind of vintage style. So if you would have go for like crazy vintage style, you, you could add like a lot, a lot of grain. And I like that even. That's cool. Yeah. So yeah, some other adjustments and all that stuff. It's already taking like a huge uh, amount of time. But yeah, then yeah, I added even more warmth. So yeah, just make it even more warmth, playing a little bit around and yeah, just adding here some glows and yeah, some minor adjustments. And then you have something like that. Yeah, that was it. Tell me if you like that kind of breakdowns where I don't go into crazy detail because maybe you know it already. And yeah, check out the first link in the description if you want to be a part of the Ultimate 3D Coaching Program. So see you on the next one. Bye.